Over the past week, a lot of big YouTubers have been screaming, the sky is falling. They said that Credit Suisse, a massive European bank, was about to fail and it would take down the world's financial markets with it. When I first heard that, I was worried because we're not ready for another global financial crisis. So I immediately dove into the research and what I found shocked me because the facts were painting a completely different picture than the gloom and doom that I heard on YouTube and Twitter. So that's the case I wanna make today, that the influencers are completely wrong and they're missing the real trigger of the next financial crisis crisis, which has nothing to do with Credit Suisse nor banks. But I will admit that on the surface level, Credit Suisse does look troublesome. They are a huge multinational bank after all, with over 1.6 trillion in assets under management. And they were deemed a systemically important bank by the Financial Stability Board. So when people saw their stock crashing towards zero and other indicators flashing warning signs, rumors started to spread that they were going to collapse and that this was Lehman Brothers all over again. I mean, that is a captivating narrative for sure, but I just don't think it's right because they're missing three key points. First, they've been looking at the wrong chart. Everyone has been sharing this chart of Credit Suisse's credit default swaps, which essentially represents the price of insurance against Credit Suisse going bust. So when it's skyrocketing like that, it means that people are expecting something bad to happen and soon. But one nuance those influencers missed is that European banks actually have two types of credit default swaps. One of them is the more risky and volatile one, while the second one, which is the better indicator of a bank's health, is less volatile. So guess which one was going viral on social media? Yep, the first one that is by nature more volatile, but is not a good indicator of a bank's health. Also check this out. It's Morgan Stanley's credit default swaps on top of Credit Suisse's. We see that Morgan Stanley's was way higher in 2008 and 2011, and yet they're still around. Also, General Motors swaps are around the same level as Credit Suisse's currently, but no one is talking about them collapsing. So maybe we shouldn't obsess with credit default swaps so much and should look at other indicators for a more complete picture. For example, Bloomberg has their own default risk model, which takes into account a lot more factors than just market implied risk. And they had Credit Suisse's one year default probability at around 2.6%, which is high for a bank, but it's not pointing to an imminent crisis like what people were saying. We could also look at Credit Suisse bonds, which are also not in crisis territory. Their 2025 bonds are currently offering around 6.8% yield, while Ukraine's 2025 bonds were offering 67%. You see the difference? Bonds give higher yields when there's a greater risk of default. So it makes sense for Ukraine's to be that high, but for Credit Suisse, not so much. And that's why their yield is much lower. Now, if that's not enough to convince you that Credit Suisse won't collapse, we can always turn to their public financials. And we see that their current assets fully cover their current liabilities and they have $47 billion in working capital. So it looks like their CEO was right when he said that they are well capitalized and have plenty of liquidity. But you're probably thinking, bro, stop falling for the banker's psyops. It's all a lie. After all, Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns both said that they were fine. Peter writes, should I be worried about Bear Stearns in terms of liquidity and get my money out of there? No, no, no. Bear Stearns is fine. But we know how that turned out. Okay, so that is a fair point and let's talk about it because I noticed a lot of people pointing out similarities between Lehman and Credit Suisse, but I don't think they're comparable at all. Like I know someone who closely followed the 2008 financial crisis and I asked him whether this Credit Suisse ordeal reminded him of the Lehman collapse. His response? <laughs> He said, if this was a Lehman or Bear Stearns moment, we'd effin' know it. He told me how the stocks of those two embattled firms would cut in half on a daily basis leading up to their bankruptcies. And that whole time, the news was covering it nonstop and they were holding emergency meetings to try to salvage the situation. So those moments felt like the market was going to zero, while this drama with Credit Suisse is chill in comparison. And that actually makes sense if we compare these two firms more closely. In its final days, Lehman had less than one $1 billion of cash on hand, and the bulk of their money was in those worthless mortgage-backed securities. Meanwhile, Credit Suisse has $270 billion of cash on hand, so that's a huge difference. Now, that is just one line on their balance sheet, so it doesn't tell us that much about their ability to avoid default. But if we look here, we see that Credit Suisse has around $97 billion in loss-absorbing capacity. And if we break that down further, around $37 billion represents their Common Equity Tier 1, or CET 
which is a great indicator of their ability to avoid default. That 37 billion is around 13.5% of their total cash on hand. And that's way higher than the 9.6% that Swiss regulators require their banks to have. For context, banks often had less than 5% for that ratio before the first world financial crisis hit. And that's why it doesn't make sense to expect a Credit Suisse default anytime soon. Here's another chart that invalidates the Lehman and Credit Suisse comparison. We want to focus on the bright blue section because that represents short-term and unstable debt, which we don't want to see a lot of. So on the very right, we have Lehman Brothers in 2007. And look how massive that bright blue portion is. In the middle, we have Credit Suisse in 2007. And even they had a substantial bright blue portion. But on the very left, we see that they have way less short-term and unstable debt than ever before. So it's not comparable to Lehman at all. Now, I've been defending Credit Suisse so much that you probably think I'm bullish on them. But that's not true because I do agree that they have serious issues, just not the ones that the influencers have identified. Like, did you know that Credit Suisse has a lot of different business units and some of them are fine and dandy while other ones are struggling big time? Their domestic Swiss bank and their wealth management arm are doing great while their investment bank is totally wrecked thanks to Bill Huang. Remember that guy? He's the infamous trader who lost $20 billion in the span of two days. And unfortunately for Credit Suisse, a lot of that money was borrowed from them. So what does this all mean for Credit Suisse moving forward? Well, it means they'll have to do some painful restructuring, perhaps package some of their struggling assets into a separate bad bank and try to sell that. But in order to do that, they have to raise additional capital. And that explains why their stock was dropping so much. It's because their existing shareholders realized that Credit Suisse would have to sell a lot more stock to raise that capital. So they sold in advance to front run that dilution. They weren't selling because they were worried about bankruptcy or anything like that. So it's not the same situation as Lehman at all. But let's just say for the sake of argument that I am wrong and Credit Suisse does collapse. Well, I would still argue that the influencers are wrong because I don't think their collapse would cause another global financial crisis. First of all, Credit Suisse is the lowest tier when it comes to systemically important banks. So while it is important, its collapse wouldn't be as devastating as if a tier four bank like JP Morgan collapsed. Second, I'm pretty sure that if they collapse, they'd be bailed out. Switzerland does take pride in their banks after all, so their government or central bank wouldn't let one of their darling banks go to zero. Also, governments learned their lesson from 2008. So so they've set up orderly processes to unwind a bad bank. In Europe, they have the single resolution board whose mission is to quote, ensure an orderly resolution of failing banks and quote, protect the taxpayer from state bailouts. So who knows, they may be able to manage a collapse without needing a bailout. I could throw more points at you all day long, but the overarching point here is that the banking system is way different today than it was back in 2008. So it's highly unlikely that we get another financial crisis coming from the banks. Now, just because the banks are fine, doesn't mean that a world financial crisis can't start elsewhere. In fact, I do think a crisis crisis may be on the horizon, and it could start from the sovereign bonds or foreign currencies area, just like Lynn Alden wrote. The theory behind this is the dollar milkshake theory, and it says that the US dollar will get so strong compared to other currencies that other countries will have problem paying their debt because most international business is denominated in USD. So that means the Bank of Japan and the European Central Bank are going to feel the heat and they're gonna call up their buddies at the Fed and be like, yo, please weaken your currency. We're drowning here. And guess what? There's only two ways to weaken the US dollar. One, print more dollars, and two, lower interest rates. So we're in a very precarious situation because inflation is at record highs. And if the Fed is forced to pivot and print money slash lower rates, then it's GG, global financial crisis, here we come. Now, that's obviously an oversimplified view of that thesis, but I may make a separate video about it if you want. As for Credit Suisse, we can just write that off as fear-mongering clickbait. It was yet another fake crisis drummed up by influencers to get engagement. Like what happened to Evergrande causing the Chinese real estate market to collapse? Or what happened to those imminent coups in Russia and China? Those were supposed to happen weeks ago. So while Credit Suisse is suffering, you shouldn't underestimate them. They were founded back in 1856. So if they can survive World War II, then this is nothing but a speed bump to them. By the way, if you enjoyed this type of video, then be sure to subscribe to our newsletter for more great analysis. Link below in the description.